Hi people of the interwebs and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for December 10th, 2014. After last week's really long episode, I'm going to make this one really quick. We need to start with Microsoft Patch Day. Tuesday was Patch Day. Microsoft released seven security bulletins. Three of them were rated critical. The rest were important. The bulletins fixed flaws in Internet Explorer, Exchange Server, Windows, and the Microsoft Office package. The Internet Explorer patch is probably the biggest deal. It fixes a bunch of memory corruption flaws bad guys can use in drive-by download attacks. Also, the Exchange Server vulnerabilities were interesting too. Two. The exchange patch fixed two cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. If a bad guy can get you to click a specially crafted link, he can probably gain access to your email. So you might want to patch exchange server. The office updates fixed various vulnerabilities that could allow malicious documents to execute code. And the Windows updates fixed at least one remote code execution flaw that can be triggered through Internet Explorer. So make sure to go get all Microsoft's updates. By the way, Adobe shares patch day two and they released a cold Fusion and Flash security update, and they also updated an old reader uh, uh, update as well. So be sure to get those. For the second story this week, I have to give you more updates on the big Sony breach. This Sony breach is something we're going to be hearing about for a long time, but there's a lot of new news about it. First of all, uh, the bad guys, GOP, that did this breach have released a lot more information. They disclosed a lot of sensitive email this week. We learned a lot of embarrassing details about some movies Sony was trying to make uh, where, where people at Sony, high executives, did things like call and Angelina Jolie a spoiled brat and a big kind of soap opera of how they lost the Jobs, the Steve Jobs movie. So lots of very, very embarrassing emails are leaking continually based on this Sony breach, which is very interesting. Another interesting update, Kaspersky released details about the malware associated with this particular breach, which they call Destrover. And this again is that wiper malware that deletes hard drives and also overwrites the master boot record. But in at least one one blog post, Kaspersky seems to show that the actors responsible for this really seem to be associated with the Shamoon Wiper incident and the Dark Soul or Korean Wiper malware incident. Basically, Kaspersky points out that many of the tactics are similar, the weird names for these unknown hacker groups are similar, the fact that the malware was made quickly before the attack is similar, and most importantly, uh, to overwrite the master boot record, there's a particular drive driver that's used that's similar across this malware and the Dark Soul malware. So Kaspersky seems to suggest that there could be North Korean ties to this malware. Meanwhile, the FBI has released data saying they cannot attribute this to North Korea, at least not yet. A few other interesting updates is Bloomberg says two unnamed sources told them that this attack may have taken place in a Bangkok hotel. It's not clear whether the attacker was there or just took advantage of a free Wi-Fi network connection from this hotel but in either case signs seem to point that some of the malware seem to have come from a hotel in Bangkok on top of that, we also heard that these attackers are actively sending emails to Sony employees threatening them, basically saying if you don't disavow Sony publicly by sending this petition, your family might be in danger. And finally, talking about the malware that affected Sony, later on Kaspersky mentioned that there's a new version of the malware that was actually signed with one of Sony's own digital certificates. Now it turns out that this may have been a prank by a researcher, because one of the things things the hackers have been disclosing is a whole bunch of Sony's digital certificates, which is really, really bad news for Sony. It turns out that maybe a research group found one of those certificates when they're going through the leaks and used it to jokingly sign a version of the malware and upload it to VirusTotal. In either case, expect to hear a lot more news about this story as different research organizations, Mandiant and the FBI, continues to examine it. We might learn more about how this attack happened, which 
means we might be able to learn uh, from what Sony may have done wrong so that we can better protect ourselves. In either case, I find these details fascinating and I'll keep sharing them as they come out. For the final story this week, Poodle is back. Remember that big uh, SSL vulnerability that allowed people to perhaps man in the middle SSL traffic if they could gather enough packets and information? That was called Poodle, and it was all due to a vulnerability that seemed to be with SSL v3. And the way to fix this particular vulnerability was to disable SSL v3. Well, it turns out that there's other ways to exploit Poodle. As it turns out, TLS can also suffer this flaw in in very particular situations where it's using CBC ciphers. Now I won't go into all the details, but there is a particular situation where certain implementations of SSL may still be vulnerable to Poodle. And it turns out that at least one big network vendor, F5, had products that were vulnerable to this. And there's a new CVE all about it. So you might want to rescan your web servers to see if you're vulnerable to this. Uh, Qualys has a very good SSL scanner tool that can find this vulnerability. I'll put a link to it in the blog post associated with this video. Now, if you're a WatchGuard customer, you might be wondering if we're vulnerable. And all signs say that we're not. However, OpenSSL has released a new version of OpenSSL to fix this issue in certain implementations. So we will be updating our products with that new version in a future release. So again, just to summarize, Poodle might be back in some cases. The best way to find out if one of your implementations implementations is vulnerable is to use Qualys' scanner, and I'll put more details about this in the blog post uh, associated with this video. So that's all for this week's short video, but as always, there's other stories out there, so be sure to check the blog post associated with this video. I'll always post that at blog.watchguard.com, so subscribe to our blog. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.